Vancouver's housing crisis. Everyone's heard about it. Everyone's talking about it, sometimes complaining about it. But what would you do to fix it if you were in charge? Our government officials may be looking as far as New Zealand for some solutions. Let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to the Real Justine Priestley channel. I am the Real Justine Priestley, your realtor with a twist here in the greater Vancouver area. And in this video, we're going to talk about New Zealand, the city of Vancouver, and a very interesting new proposal that is going in front of city council in January of 2022 about zoning and high density that might really take some pressure off the affordability crisis for housing here in Vancouver. Recently, in the faraway country of New Zealand, the two opposing political parties came together and agreed that housing affordability in all the major cities is a massive problem. And they put forward an incredible precedent setting, complete ban on single family detached zoning single family zoning. So that's kind of realtor speak. So what that means is when you see a house on a piece of land, that's only designed for one family to live in it. So there's no basement suite being rented out. There's no laneway house. There's no um, carriage house above the garage. So just a house on a piece of land that's considered to be a single family detached house. In most cities and many larger towns, certainly in North America, the downtown core will have what we realtors call high density. So it means multifamily, that's apartment buildings with many families stacked on top of each other, or townhomes where the homes are attached and much closer together. There isn't so much actual land being owned by individual owners. And over time, as a city grows, the single family detached properties become more and more valuable if they're close to the city center. So of course in Vancouver, this is easy to see. There's a downtown core, Yale Town, Olympic Village, etc. quite high density. But as soon as you get over to Kitsilano or many areas in East Van, it becomes single family detached homes. All that is just by way of me explaining a little bit about what all those terms mean. So the ban on single family detached home zoning in New Zealand, what that means is that if you're a homeowner already and you have a piece of land, you are now able to subdivide so you can sell off a piece of your land or you can build on your land and the limit is up to three units, up to three stories. So then your single family zoning with one family living on that piece of land becomes potentially three families. That's a big change. The homeowners or the developers no longer have to jump through hoops to get permits to rezone the land for multifamily or mixed use. And that just makes the whole process much easier. Here in Vancouver, Tom Davidoff, who is the director of UBC Land Economics, says that he agrees with this proposal and he thinks it's a great idea and that Vancouver could benefit from adopting very similar plans. Other experts in Vancouver seem to be on board as well. Mixed use and multifamily zoning, they think makes a lot more sense. And those ideas would include the west side of Vancouver, which is the wealthiest part of Vancouver, the west side and Point Grey. Over there, the status quo for decades has been single family zoning with many properties being extremely large. There's a lot of land over there maybe it's not being used well. Historically, many of those wealthy West Side land owners have been reluctant to get on board with proposals such as these. And in Vancouver, much of the rezoning that has already occurred for laneway homes and such are in East Van. In my opinion, it would be a very good idea for homeowners or landowners to have the option it would be an option 
of increasing density on their property, especially perhaps retirees or other people who have had their ability to generate an income affected so that they might be able to keep their homes and pay their taxes. I don't think very many people would argue that here in Vancouver, there is much need and demand for more kind of middle ground housing. Right now, there's mostly small apartments or single family detached homes and very few options in the middle. Affordability makes it very difficult for people to get into those single family detached homes. They're well over a million, a million and a half mostly. These kinds of proposals would give us options that maybe would range around 600 to 800,000 and an option for families to live in a residential neighborhood, not stacked into high rises if they don't want to be. And the other thing I consider to be positive about this idea is that Right now, the only option is to move out to the suburbs. People end up in Hope or Chilliwack or deep in Langley. Not that there's anything wrong with those places. They're lovely. Let's say that 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50,000 laneway houses or carriage houses were built all across Vancouver itself. And all those families that could live and not have to commute, I think it would be great if there were more housing options within the city of Vancouver. Maybe your commute is much shorter. Think about Highway 1, how crowded it is. It would be nice if we could have more people who want to, to be able to live in Vancouver, right? Vancouver's mayor, Kennedy Stewart, is bringing a proposal in January of 2022 in front of city council. It's called Making Home. He brought a similar proposal earlier this year and was voted down seven to two. But apparently he has more people on board for the January proposal. And this proposal says that you could put up to six units on a standard 40,000 square foot lot. I have a rendering here of what something like that might look like. So you might have up to four in what resembles a house structure, single structure, and then on the back part of the property you could have something like a laneway that would actually have two units in it. The initial proposal that I mentioned coming in January 2022 is just to start with 2,000 lots being affected. I have to assume those would be an east van but I'm just guessing. I feel like our government is trying to help with prices skyrocketing and inventory at an all time low. I guess they have to do something. What would you do? Comment below. Remember to smoosh. It's interesting to know that the New Zealand housing crisis looks like it's even more extreme than here in Vancouver, and they only have 5 million people living there. In 2018, they completely banned foreign buyers. If you like the idea of this proposal that I talked about from the mayor, I would say run for city council. Get on there, and then you can swing the vote, right? Another thing that everyone's talking about are the interest rate hikes that are expected in 2022. I've heard that there may be as many as three. And right now, I feel like there's even a surge of buyers because they don't want to pay the higher interest rates. They want to buy something right now while it's still so low. It's so much pressure for buyers. It's still multiple offers I'm seeing on all of our listings. It's crazy out there. And it's great to sell if you can, but then you have to buy. And what are you gonna buy? Real estate dilemmas. Thanks for watching the Real Justine Priestley channel, everybody. I am the Real Justine Priestley, your local realtor in the greater Vancouver area. And remember, I'm here to help and I'm here for you. Reach out anytime. And if you wanna watch a video about why buy a house, watch this one. See you in the next video. Bye.